Hi, my name is Tyler Boyd. I am horticulturalist here at Scissor Tail Park, as well as a beekeeper. Uh, at Scissor Tail Park right now, we currently have two hives. We're hoping to expand that to up to 10 hives going into next spring, 2021. The great thing about having bees at a park like Scissor Tail is one, we're gonna get more flowers and fruit set and seed set here at the park, which will make it more enjoyable for the guests. Uh, we're also gonna have, hopefully, an educational aspect to this, to this program. And the bees are gonna be the centerpiece for the pollinators here at the park. Uh, the great thing about this box here is it is sealed up. So the bees still ha are able to breathe through various vent holes. Uh, but the screen allows for people to come right up to the box and view the bees and not worry about getting stung at all. So the nice thing about this box is we can take it anywhere in the park and do sort of a pop-up demonstration. The larger hives will of course be in the very, very back of the park, away from the public view. So here at Sister Tail Park, this is gonna be a collaborative event here at the park with the staff. Uh, and the park rangers are actually gonna be helping us do talks with the bees as well as interacting with the guests concerning honeybees and the pollinators overall. What we're really trying to do here at Scissor Tail is get people encouraged and excited about pollinators. And a lot of people's first inclination is butterflies or honey that comes from the honeybees. We're really trying to expand that to include other things like sweat bees or other native bees, bumblebees, dragonflies, kind of the whole gamut of insects here at the park. So the great thing about honeybees is they can both visit native plants as well as non-native plants. And we have a nice assortment and mix here at the park of both of those. The great thing about having the mix is we can have native pollinators come in and visit our native plants, but we can still have things like Russian sage, which the honeybees are gonna be attracted to as well. So the great thing about Scissor Tail Park is we have a large selection of trees, both native and non-native. The great thing about all these trees is they do flower. So going into early spring and summer, we'll have tons of blooms on our trees here. And that of course attract pollinators, including the honeybees. Uh, one of my favorite trees is actually the Kentucky coffee tree. The main reason I love it is not only does it have great fruit on it, and of course with the bees we'll get better fruit set, but it also has really nice delicate flowers in early, early spring. The great thing about flowering trees is for the same amount of space that you'll have a tree, you can have just as many flowers up into the canopy. Uh, another great example are of course the Oklahoma red buds, which will bloom early, early spring. And what those early spring flowers do is it helps the bees get a jump start on their production going into the summer flow, which is when they're gonna get all the honey. So the main thing that we have to really focus on when we're maintaining our bee colony is just the bee health. Uh, of course, a lot of people are familiar with colony collapse disorder. The great thing about this park is we have enough space here that we can maintain several hives. We are currently using uh, organic treatments to treat the mites, uh, the varro mites that get onto the honeybees. Uh, we hope to have that managed to the point to where in the future we may not have to use mite treatments at all transitioning more towards sustainable, natural beekeeping. We hope one day to have scissor tail honey. Of course, with all things, it's a very climatic, variable agriculture being uh, apiculture as well. Uh, but we'll have extra honey for sure. <laughs>